this case we've got altered passive eruption. Now the patient had inflammation through orthodontic treatment. So first we did a gingivectomy on the lowers uh, and now we're doing crown lengthening on the uppers. Now I had a stent made from a digital smile design but I was not happy with this so uh, after careful measurement I freehanded the incisions. Now I'm not using a beveled incision, uh, I've really got the scalpel at 90 degrees to the surface. Uh, the tissue was quite thick and tough here and I was unable to cut it accurately when I had the uh, scalpel angled over for a bevel. So first I'm doing the gingivectomy. Uh, then I marked the teeth with pencil and elevated the flap. Now, as expected, the well we knew this from the cone beam, but as expected, the bone level actually came all the way down to the enamel. So there was nowhere for proper attachment to occur to the root. And this is a significant reason why the patient had uh, inflamed tissues. The patient also had these massive exostoses that you can see here on the buckle of her premolars and molars. So we've, we're uh, recontouring those because it's very difficult to get the tissue to come down and meet the tooth properly uh, if you have such large bulky exostoses. Doing some bone removal around the tooth, so basically just to give us two millimetres of root structure for the uh, tissue to adhere to. And then we're doing uh, vertical mattress sutures through each papilla. Now I'm not doing anything else, obviously this is not a case where we're trying to uh, bring the tissue down, <laughs> we're, we're not trying to cover recession here, so just simple uh, vertical mattress on each papilla and the uh, and then tell the patient obviously soft diet and don't move your lips too much uh, and there's the final case so that the healing photos will be up on ripe soon thank you for watching